What's up, family? And welcome to this week's installment of Back on the Block, your place in cyberspace for the best in music, news, and conversation on issues and events that impact our community. I'm your host and neighborhood tour guide, 10. And we've got another great show planned for you this evening. Joining us here on the block tonight, we've got the music of Darian Ron, Candy Dulfer, Brian Simpson, Hiroshima, The Temptations, Tower of Power, and much, much more. In our Behind the Headlines conversation this evening, we'll be talking about the movement to privatize public education in this country, who's behind it, and what it means to our community. So pour yourself something smooth on whatever you do to get in the mood. Relax, kick back, and enjoy tonight's show. We're going to get this party started with some classic old school funk. Here's Johnny Guitar Watson and Ain't That a Bitch. Listen. Mm. Listen. I'm working 40 hours, six long days, and I'm highly embarrassed every time I get my pay. And they're working everybody, Lord, they're working poor folks to death. And when you pay your rent and your car note, you ain't got a damn thing left. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> yes, it is. Somebody doing something slick. Yeah, they are. It's got me wondering which is which. Might as well go up down to and dig a ditch. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> yes, it is. Now, ain't that a bitch? Let me tell you about my qualifications I program computers I know accounting and psychology I took a course in business And I can speak a little Japanese I fuck song Got to work two years To get one week off with pay And when I'm on my job I better watch every word I say Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> Somebody doing something slick me wondering which is which Might as well go up to the end Dig a ditch, ain't that a bitch Way too cold Ain't that a bitch Make me wanna holler Supermarket to get myself something to eat. And when I look at the prices, they knock me off of my feet. I was in the baloney section and I had to take myself a close look. Now, our beauty bar couldn't have made these prices with a sky hook. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> yes, it is. Somebody doing something slick. Yeah, they are. Got me wondering which is which. Might as well go out trying to end. 
dig a ditch, ain't that a bitch? <laughs> so ain't that a bitch?
You're listening to Paul Hardcastle from his Jazz Masters 5 LP, World of Action. Before that, we had Chris Standring and Soul Symphony. Uh, the album, Don't Talk, Dance. And then, first in line, we heard from Candy Dulfer from her LP, Funked Up. And then we opened tonight's show with uh, classic funk, Ain't That a Bitch, by blues, soul, and funk musician Johnny Guitar Watson. You know, Watson recorded uh, throughout the 50s and the 60s with some marginal success. But his creative reinvention in the 70s with disco and funk overtones saw Watson have major hits like I Need It and Superman Lover. His recording career spanned 40 years, with his biggest hit being A Real Mother For You, released in 1977. I'm sure y'all remember that one. In 1994, uh, in a, I'm sorry, in a 1994 interview with David Ritz uh, for the liner notes to his LP, The Funk Anthology, Watson was asked if his 1980 song Telephone Bill anticipated the coming of rap music, to which Watson replied, anticipated, I damn well invented it. Here's Kim Waters and Reaching Out.
from his LP, Talk of the Town, that's Darren Ron, and I Can't Go For That. And we opened up this smooth set, I'm sorry, smooth jazz set, with Kim Waters reaching out uh, from his Love Stories LP. And then we followed Kim Waters with True Blue uh, from Mindy A. Bear and her, her Life Less Ordinary album. And then there in the middle we had You Gotta Be, Brian Simpson, from his new album, Just What You Need. We'll be right back with more Back on the Block after these very important messages. You got your radio dial locked on to WBLB, home of the most unique blend of music, news, and conversation you'll find anywhere on the Internet. Well, I finally did it. I opened a 401k. What? Why? Just wait for the inheritance. We've definitely got a rich uncle somewhere. We're one call away from the winner's circle at the Derby, dinners with multiple forks, a vacation home in the country, using summer as a verb. You don't actually think that, do you? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs, the Ohio Society of CPAs, and the Ad Council. You're struggling with your mortgage. You think about it. You don't do anything but think about it. What are we going to do if we lose the house? Where are we going to go? At work. I can't let anybody find out. I'm so embarrassed. At dinner. How can I tell the kids? It's going to wreck their lives. And at 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get through this. What's going to happen to us? It's time to stop thinking. It's time to start dialing. Call 1-888-995-HOPE for a free government program that offers expert one-on-one advice about your mortgage options. I'm all alone. No, you're not. We've helped over a million homeowners, and we want to help you. And now there are more ways to help. Call 1-888-995-HOPE or visit makinghomeaffordable.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Treasury, HUD, and the Ad Council.
That was Everett Harp from his In the Moment LP, the tune Just As You Are. Uh, Everett Harp is going to be uh, performing at Tangiers later this month, uh, Tangiers in Akron later this month. As soon as we uh, get that date uh, on our calendar, we'll let you know. You know, in spite of conservatives' attempts to undermine the Affordable Care Act, last week it was announced that over 7 million Americans have enrolled for coverage. Let's be real, family. The American health care system was a disgraceful mess before the Affordable Care Act, leaving millions of people uninsured in a system of unchecked and runaway wasteful cost. Since the Affordable Care Act was passed, things have changed dramatically and we're moving toward a humane universal coverage like every other advanced nation in the world. And the cost and delivery systems are finally subject to at least the beginnings of a discussion about cost and results. For once, sanity and humanity have prevailed, and America will be a better place as a result of it. Again, in spite of efforts from the right to defund and dismantle the Affordable Care Act, it appears that Obamacare is here to stay. You know, after spending billions of dollars in an effort to prevent the reform of health care in this country, it now appears uh, that the conservatives have turned their attention to public education. By that, I mean public education is becoming big business as bankers, hedge fund managers and private equity investors are entering to what they consider to be an emerging market. As Rupert Murdoch put it, after purchasing an educational technology company, and I quote, when it comes to K through 12 education, we see a $500 billion sector in the U.S. alone. To our next break, we're going to continue this very important conversation on whether or not public education is for sale and what that means to American communities across the country. But for now, we're going to continue with the music. Here's Foreplay from their album Elixir and Fannie Mae.
this is Jesse J from her CD Second Chances. You know, it's still holding steady on the smooth jazz charts, although falling out of the top ten uh, here recently. It's been a major hit for the young Mexican-American saxophonist uh, since her debut album Tequila Moon back in 2008. We're going to keep the mood mellow. Uh, this is Dave Kaz from his CD The Dance and Surrender. <laughs>
That was Juarez from his On Top of the World LP, I'm Leaving. And before that, we heard from Ohio's own John Legend, uh, When It's Cold Outside, Refuge When It's Cold Outside, rather, from his um, Get Gifted, Get Lifted LP. I just want to send out a shout out and congratulations to, uh, as I said, Ohio native John Legend on his recent marriage. Uh, we wish him all the luck in the world. And before John Legend, we had. We heard from, rather, Hiroshima and The Kitchen, and then we opened that smooth jazz set with Dave Koz and Surrender. We're going to be back uh, to continue our conversation on the push to privatize public education on the other side of these very brief messages. You're listening to Back on the Block, your place in cyberspace for the most unique blend of music, news, and conversation on issues and events that impact our community. Green light. Hey girl, school zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah, street. Pizza sounds good. Ball in street? Girl in street! <gasps> it's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text, stop the Rex. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. It's 6.42 p.m. Time for Steve Plato and his son Dylan to do the dishes. They talk about everything from the yuckiness of girls to the awesomeness of his soccer team. Sometimes they don't talk at all. Then, hey! the dreaded <laughs> splash fight. It's dad o'clock, and it's the best time of the day. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. You know, family, we were talking earlier about uh, the push to privatize public education uh, in this country and um, who is actually behind that. Um, noted education historian Diane Ravitch served as Assistant Secretary of Education under President George H.W. Bush and was an advocate of school choice and charter schools. Under George W. Bush, she also supported the, old, the No Child Left Behind initiative. However, after careful investigation, she changed her mind and has become, according to Salon magazine, and I quote, the nation's highest profiled opponent of charter-based education. According to Rebidich, what's at stake is the future of American public education. Rebidich contends that one of the foundation stones of our democracy is public education and that an attack on public education is an attack on democracy. You know, after having spent several years in education, I had the opportunity to see firsthand what's going on in, in our classrooms. And, and I'll be the first to say that there is need for reform. However, who are the people behind the efforts to reform and privatize public education? First, it must be said that reform is really a misnomer because the advocates for this cause seek not to reform public education, but to transform it into an entrepreneurial sector of the economy. The roots of this so-called reform movement can be traced to a radical ideolo ide ideology rather, uh, with a fundamental distrust of public education and a hostility to the public sector in general. The reform movement is really a corporate reform movement funded to a large degree by major foundations, Wall Street hedge fund managers, entrepreneurs, and believe it or not, the U.S. Department of Education. Many of the players in this effort are some of the same individuals and organizations who tried so hard to undermine the Obama administration and his universal health care initiative. The movement is determined to cut costs and maximize competition among schools. That in itself doesn't sound like a bad idea, but it seeks to eliminate our locally based, locally controlled school systems. I'm sorry, our locally controlled system of public education and replace it with a competitive market based system of school choice, one that includes traditional public schools, privately managed charter schools, religious schools, voucher schools, for profit schools, virtual schools and for-profit vendors of instruction. 
You know, we'll continue this very important com conversation around the privatization of public education and its impact on a community during our next break. But we're going to get back to the music. Here's one of my favorite songs by The Temptations, Ball of Confusion.
We opened that set with the temptations and ball of confusion. Then we got real funky with Tower of Power and What Is Hip from the CD, The Very Best of Tower of Power. Followed by, in my opinion, one of the brightest stars in modern jazz today, Nolan's born trombone shorty and fire and brimstone. And finally, we heard from Kiko Matsui and Black Lion. Unfortunately for Kiko, the release of Nathan East CD late last month dropped her to number two on the jazz on the I'm sorry on the smooth jazz charts. But it's still a great album. Uh, the the album is entitled. I'm sorry, excuse me. The item the album is entitled Soul Quest again. Kiko Matsui and Black Lion. Now we're going to have a little neo soul. Here's Leela James and Layla Hathaway. My bad, family. It's Leela James and Anthony Hamilton. And say that.
That was the late, great Wayman Teasdale on the title tune from his album Hang Time. You know, we've been talking this evening about the privatization of public education. And, um, you know, I want, I want to be perfectly clear. Again, having spent several years in the classroom, I do understand the need for reform. I just want to put that out there. Um, that need to do something and to do it now is only underscored by a report released by the Annie Casey Foundation just this week. Uh, the report found that while the achievement gap is shrinking, minority students still are woefully behind in a number of areas of life. The foundation's 2013 Kids Count report 
which measured 16 indicators among five racial groups, concluded that most black children are at a disadvantage practically their entire lives from their birth weight to the quality of their schools. In Ohio, for instance, the problem is particularly troubling because black children have the lowest composite test scores in the United States, 247 points out of a possible 1,000. The national average for black children is 345 points, less than half of what Asian and white children are scoring, 776 and 704 respect, respectfully. Overall, African-American high school gradu graduation rates stand at 66%. In contrast, rates for Asians and P Pacific Island children top 90%. Again, family, we're not debating the need for educational reform in this country. The question is, do we want that reform to be driven by organizations like ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council, the Koch brothers, and the people who bought us Walmart and Fox News? You know, if recent history is any indication of what we can expect from these 21st century carpetbaggers, their concern is going to be their bottom line. That is how much money they can make for their stockholders at the expense of our children's education. Because they're driven by profit, they will pick the low-hanging fruit to ensure success, while even more and more of our kids undoubtedly will be left behind. You don't usually get a stock tip from a 16-year-old, but I'm here to tell you about a different kind of stock. It's called Better Futures, a stock for social change that's not about making money. Instead, you invest to help students like me go to college, which ends up making the future better for all of us. My name is Alicia, and I'm your dividend. Invest in Better Futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org slash invest. A mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. Brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm LeVar Burton, and I'm proud to be a book person. How do I choose a book? Sometimes it's the cover, sometimes it's the title. I guess I'm pretty visual. If a book's really impressing me and the writing is really good, I will peek and see what the last paragraph is. Because the endings of books should rock you. I am a book person. And if you're a book person, too, read to a child and spark a lifetime of ambition. Join me at bookpeopleunite.org because reading is fundamental. A public service announcement brought to you by Reading is Fundamental, Library of Congress, and the Ad Council. You've got your radio dial locked on to WBOB, home of the most unique blend of music, news, and conversation you'll find anywhere on the Internet. Again, tonight we've been talking about the privatization of education and the need for us to ensure that um, if we cannot stop this train, we at least have some control over it. You know, I, I mentioned last week or in our last um, show that we were introducing a new segment, Word on the Street. And tonight, in our Word on the Street segment, we feature wordsmith Ta'alam Asi. Ta'alam Asi began pursuing the spoken word art. I'm sorry, began pursuing the spoken word art form in 1997 after visiting a poetry reading upon the invitation of a friend. And at that time, he was a full time lecturer and a senior level accountant at Rutgers University and a principal partner in a small business consulting firm. In 1999, AC left Rutgers University to become a full-time performance poet. Uh, much of AC's poetry addresses social and political issues from an Afrocentric perspective. His work also provides a poetic perspective of relationships, whether man to woman, mother to son, or man to man. He champions the struggles of single parenthood and fatherly responsibility. Here's Ta'alam AC and Love Yourself. Life called me the other day. And he was like, you know, how do you deal with all the people that hate you? And, and I had to lie because I'm like, man, very few people in this world are ever going to love you. And that means that the vast majority of people are either going to feel indifferent towards you or they're going to pity you or they're going to hate you. 
And the reason people pity you is they need you to validate their own failure. You know, that's why they watch them little BS talk shows so they can see all those losing people so that they can feel better about the fact that they've lost themselves. Just, just not as much as the people on that show. And when people feel indifferent towards you, that means, you know, you ain't even worth thinking about. But when they hate you, they think about you. And what, what's, what's all the love that you think people have for people in the past? Anyway, I had to tell life, look at Malcolm, man. He had to pass around that collection plate. Listen to the old speeches. He would pass it around like two times just to get enough money to pay for the Audubon. And when he walked down the street when he was alive, people were just cross the streets on Harlem. How did that feel? I mean, you, you look at how people talk about him today, you think it was all love. Or look at like Bob Marley and Coltrane. You, you think they went platinum in their lifetimes, man? <laughs> They ain't even go gold, not in their lives. All that happened after they died. I like to think about Donny Hathaway and Stevie Wonder. How Donny killed himself, man. He was so focused on who, who hated him and who didn't like him. You know, and why was people giving more love to Stevie? And when you look at old Stevie footage, you see how people were shifting in their seats and looking at their watches and not paying attention. But you know, all jokes aside, Stevie couldn't see that. And maybe that's what it's about, you know. Even seeing the haters Like Bill Cosby I can't tell you how to be successful But the way to fail Is trying to make everybody happy Focus on the people who love you And focus on being the type of person That you can love yourself 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 You've been listening to Back on the Block, your place in cyberspace for the most unique blend of music, news, and conversation you're going to find anywhere on the Internet. Be sure to check us out on the World Wide Web at TenthLetterToYou.com. That's T-E-N-T-H-L-T-R-2-U.com. On Twitter at hashtag TenthLetterToYou. On Skype at 216-772-3440. We thank you for visiting our neighborhood. We hope you had a good time. I know we enjoyed having you. Please visit again. And next time, be sure to invite a friend. We're going to let the Brothers Johnson take us out of here. Strawberry Letters 23. Until we meet again, this is 10. Wishing you peace. Is it cool? Is it cool?